Hello and welcome to Solar PV TV. Today we bring you special coverage of GTM Research's U.S. Solar Market Insight Conference from sunny San Diego. And I'm lucky to be joined by Bill Walton, who really needs no introduction. Bill. Christian, it's great to be here. We're in San Diego at the Green Tech Media Conference. It's been so interesting and so fascinating. And the great thing about it is that not only is the message so good and so pure, but the people who are so inspirational, so committed, so dedicated. And that's what drives me because this is the battle of our lives. This is one that we cannot lose. We must come together and we must win. Energy production and resource management, the critical issues of our time. and. By working together with the science and the technology and the ingenuity and the new equipment and the new engineering, we have a chance to survive. We have a chance to keep this thing going. So this is an exciting conference. We're talking about the state of the U.S. solar market and specifically uh, it's timed with the release of your third quarter Solar Market Insight Report where we talk about the U.S. solar market. What are some of the biggest trends that we're seeing right now in the U.S. solar market? Yeah, I mean, the overall trend remains what it has been for a while, which is that the U.S. solar market is growing at a pretty rapid clip. We installed 1.3 gigawatts in the third quarter of this year. That's the fourth straight quarter where we've installed over a gigawatt for the first time in, in U.S. solar history. We're going to do about 6.5 gigawatts over the course of 2014, which is up 36% over last year, which was up 41% over the year before. So, you know, it's, we're growing accustomed to it, but it's significant growth that just keeps happening. I was struck that we have a whole day here at this session dedicated to energy storage. Matt, why do you think that there's so much interest in energy storage at this time? Well, I think it's really, you know, energy storage has uh, such an ability to really maximize solar's value. You know, solar can obviously be deployed in a number of situations and is, uh, you know, a great solution to help bring carbon-free generation onto the grid. But because, uh, you know, it can only operate when the sun is on, uh, and that, that is one limitation where energy storage can help to expand upon that value um, and help that solar be, uh, you know, not only delivered when the sun is not up, but also be delivered when it is needed most. I think someone made the comment today that it really is a rifle shot. You can really target that energy and deliver it when the grid needs it most uh, to help reduce peak demand, help to reduce some of these other more expensive types of energy that are out there. Obviously, this is a big quarter, Q3, which the Solar Market Insight Report just covered. The first time that we've ever had more than 300 megawatts of residential solar PV installed in one quarter in the United States. Uh, can you sort of give me some broad strokes about where the residential solar market is at right now? Sure. Well, you're right. The solar industry, or the residential solar industry, is booming um, larger than non-residential at this point, point. Um, and um, I think a lot of that has to do with um, the trends that we're seeing among the leading companies. A lot of the growth is being driven by the top 10 or so companies, even the top five companies, uh, because they've just been able to scale so dramatically so quickly. <music> So Kelsey, NRG is a traditional energy company with a retail distribution arm and is probably the first company like this to move whole hog into uh, residential solar. Can you talk a little bit about that decision? Sure. So uh, I think our leadership of our company, driven by David Crane, our CEO, sees the energy landscape changing and uh, has created a pretty simplistic goal, which is to become the 21st century energy company. And uh, certainly we see that with the generation capacity that we have today. Uh, we have a retail arm which sells energy to consumers, and now here we are, as he often refers to us as the center of the universe uh, from the rooftop residential solar space. There are a lot of great roles for, for utilities as the market continues to evolve. And in particular, there are also opportunities for utilities to help actually expand the market. Um, one of the things we talked about in, in my panel this morning here at the Solar Market Insights Conference was the fact that uh, while there are many customers who are willing, you know, willing to make a switch from their utility or at least a partial switch from their utility, there are many customers who uh, aren't going to go through the effort to do that. And so if utilities are able to offer some sort of solar program to a customer, uh, we likely would see far more customers actively engage in solar and help grow the market than if utilities are completely left out of that equation.
Last time we spoke in detail, it was at the um, Solar Power International trade show in Las Vegas, and we had talked about, you know, the what the landscape was going to look like past the extension of the ITC. Uh, since then, we've had an election in the United States, and the Senate has been taken over by the Republican Party. How does the new Republican majority in the Senate affect the outlook for federal solar policies, and particularly that extension of the ITC to include, uh, or the proposed extension of the ITC to include the projects under construction? Well, I think, uh, I'll touch on that in two ways. I think to answer your ITC related question, I think I think it makes the prospects for commence cons the so-called commence construction language uh, a little less likely. Um, I think the uh, the Republicans have demonstrated that they're uh, not big fans of of uh, tax credits in general, of uh, solar energy in general, and so I think particularly not great fans of uh, of uh, solar tax credits. How are you feeling about the odds for ITC extension at this point? Sure. So at, at the GTM conferences today, even we heard from Bill Walton and uh, his enthusiasm about all of us working together. Um, and that is what we try to do with the Solar Pledge, uh, a campaign where everyone comes together with a singular goal of extending the ITC. Um, my personal belief is that solar needs the benefit um, and ahead of it until there's a fair level playing field across all energy sectors. Uh, until then, it's a vital part of our growth throughout the country and we, see, we, will, we will succeed and have more solar professionals in the market uh, under an ITC and I, I believe that's why it should uh, be extended and why it will be extended. In any other nation, I would be looking to a government source to tell me how much solar was installed in the United States, uh, but in the United, or sorry, in the nation, over say the quarter or the month. But in the United States, I'm going to Green Tech Media Research and SIA's U.S. Solar Market Insight report. Um, what's going on with the presentation of solar data by the U.S. government? Yeah, I mean, look, we love the fact that there's an opportunity for us to be the, the de facto source for data on solar in the U.S., but I agree. I mean, we rely on government data in many other countries. And you know, truthfully, in the U.S., it's harder to collect than most other places. Uh, a lot of places have a singular government program, federal government program, that drives most solar installations so they can track based on that. It doesn't exist here. So what we actually have to go through in order to get the data that we get, even on just the 31 states that we track individually, is over 100 different data sources. What's going on here with this lack of transparency around the, the information that the government and the grid operators clearly have access to, but we're not seeing it? Well, I think, I think you're making a big assumption. I mean, the FERC in general is recording um, solar that actually is filed for a qualifying facility status, and that's it. And so it's not clear to me that they have the data that, that we're asking them to report. Now, it's not to say that the data doesn't exist. All of the rebate providers and all the utility interconnection providers in each state has the data, and that data is reported by Green Tech Media and other people. But the official U.S. government sources is not... Uh, uh, reporting that data, which is sad. Uh, in fact, I mean, we should expect more from our electric utility companies and our government.